You're talking about sustainable food with Eric March and Raquel Kennedy. Thank you very much for being on to tell us about EcoGrow Farms. All right, so I'm new to this. Explain to me what it is that you are trying to do. You're trying to grow food inside in the state of Connecticut. Eric, take it. Well, you just hit it all in the head. We're oh, trying good. To, trying to <laughs> That's great. Grow food year-round in the state of Connecticut. Which we for, can't for, do right now. We currently cannot, right? So your growing season in Connecticut, what, is all of maybe three to five months, depending on what you're trying to grow. And what we're trying to produce is something year-round. How did the two of you come together and say, let's form EcoGrow Farms and make our food sustainable, not truck it in from outside? And you're talking about vegetables primarily. Right. How did you come together and come up with this plan? Well, I, I've actually known Eric for about six years. Um, I'm in the energy business, in the energy management business. I um, own a company called Victory Energy Solutions. And I actually started that company partly because of meeting Eric and him providing me with information on energy efficiency and the important, importance of it to our state, to job creation, et cetera. So we've known each other for many years. Uh, we connected again about a year ago and talked about some different projects, um, some new technology and energy efficiency. And we were having dinner about six months ago. I was ordering broccoli Rob for dinner. And you're a vegetarian, uh, mostly. And yes. you said, "Where's the meat?" Or you're, you're just trying right, to something figure to out. that effect. I'm, yeah. I'm looking at this large dish of vegetables, and I'm thinking to myself, and the price. And the price. The price is what got me. And I said, "Well, there's a viable market for this here. What is the big catch? What 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 is so interesting about organic food? Quite frankly, it's flavor. It's it, it's healthy. It's a ripe product at the end of the day, which caused a cycle of just uh, due diligence and research." into understanding what drives our agriculture or food uh, system here in mm -hmm. America. The first thing I found was that a head of lettuce is shipped from California to Connecticut. And you think about all the time, the resources that are used in getting that head of lettuce Well, here. it's miles and miles on the road by yeah. the time it gets here. And you said it's picked early. It's picked early and then gasified. Now, the, the term gasified in itself, it should be a fear factor, right? But what they're trying to do is show that it's riper on the on the grocery store shelf but really what it means is when you pick something before it's ripe it's you've picked it before it's ready to be eaten harvested right it's like a banana take a green banana and bite into it and take a yellow banana and bite no, into thank it, you right right i want to wait till it's ripe. <laughs> so the two of you come together and you say let's form this company let's find let's identify a building somewhere in the state of connecticut and you said this is also being done somewhere in Chicago, but it's not commonplace in, this, in the United States. No, it's not. So let's find a building and start growing our food here. How are we going to do that, Raquel? So uh, obviously uh, a good business plan. Um, a big factor is the financing. Uh, but just as important is having the right players, the right people involved. And for us, for me, you know, I've always been a community person. And um, we really wanted to get people in Connecticut behind this to learn about it, to understand the importance of it. Um, you know, 80%, what I, I learned this from, you know, doing research with Eric, about 80% of our, of our fruits and vegetables are imported into Connecticut. So you think Because of the short growing season. Right. So you think about food, food security. Um, what if for some reason the food couldn't get here? Um, you know, the other things are about taste, quality, cost. Uh, cost. I just, you Look, know. The cost of blueberries this year. So let's say you have the building and you're looking for investors. Right. And you're looking for folks who believe in what it is you're doing. You're looking for farm hands. How big, let's say you've got the building of your dreams. How big is it? What does it look like? What's going to go on in here? The prospect we're dealing with. So the, the, we do have a building. It was just, picked for to doing something else originally mm -hmm. and we've transitioned it into can we turn this into an indoor farm so we brought in a uh, professional engineering firm that's been doing this for 25 years however not at the scale that we've projected to be mm -hmm. they've, they've done it in 25,000 square foot buildings but we're talking about 150,000 square foot building that to can grow be what? a lettuce? mega complex lettuce to start right but we can grow lettuce strawberries greens any, anything for a salad Lettuce, cucumbers, tomatoes. Lettuce has the highest turnover rate, but it's a good uh, incubator. Did you say every 28 days you pick lettuce? Every yes. 28 days. So it grows fast. 
It mm. grows fast, and the, the market is available for it. You go to any, any small mom and pop restaurant and find out what they're paying for a head of lettuce. And they're gonna tell you that that's the last thing they wanna talk about because the price is through the roof. When we ran our model, we look at what the cost would be. We can get, supply them an organic product for about 25 cents less per head of lettuce than what they're paying now, organic. Do you envision these buildings all over the state of Connecticut? I mean, if you, if you had your druthers, is, is that what, what would we happen? We envision them all over the country. Uh, we're starting in Connecticut, we live in Connecticut, we're invested in Connecticut. We think this is a great opportunity not only to show the rest of the country what can be done with technology, with energy technology. Connecticut is really one of the top states in the country in terms of you know, using energy technology and energy efficiency. So this is a great place to start. Uh, we're looking at um, doing something in an inner city as well. I think this is an awesome opportunity to take you know, a large inner city building, create jobs, teach people in the inner city that live there really what it's like to grow food. We don't, they don't, people don't have that opportunity. And you talk so, about one seat at a time, and right. you talk about having cameras there and getting schools involved so they watch their food grow. And that's about getting back to what we've gotten away from. We've gotten so used to using our iPods, smartphones, whatever you want to call them, that kids have become detached from nature and yeah. detached of the natural growing cycle, where our food really comes from. This kind of reintroduces that, except it's got a technology twist to it that it's for the future. And I mean, if, if we're not paying attention to it, then who's going to be? Right. And I think people take food for granted, and they shouldn't, because as you say, we're a small state, we ought to be able to sustain ourselves in many ways. So first steps, you're getting going, you've identified a building. How soon do you think you'll be up and running? Well, we've got a comprehensive plan put together that once the capital upraise is met, mm -hmm. we can have, we can, the, the plant will be ready for full production within nine months of its start, start date. Literally, we'll be putting food out. Now, the interesting uh, part about what we're doing here is not only are we growing it indoors and we're able to grow it year round, but we're, there's no waste, no byproduct. We're using 90% less resources from, and I'm talking water, I'm talking what, what the big topic is right now, let's use the Keystone Pipeline, right, oil. Mm -hmm. We truck ahead of lettuce, think across the country by a diesel truck to get to Connecticut. That's 3,000 miles. Think about how much gasoline's used just to get ahead of lettuce here when you really want to put it into perspective. So to get this thing off the ground, what do you need? You need angel investors? You need, what do you need? Let's get it on the table. What do you need to get this thing going? So it is, it, it is angel investors, and it is a large sum of, of capital that's needed. Like I said, we, we, um, we're looking for about $7 million mm -hmm. in order to get this up and going. Have you gone to the state and asked for them? We, I mean, that's, you know, that's one of the things that I will be working on uh, is this is going to be a public private partnership, but not public just, you know, getting the state involved, which we are, you know, going to be looking for that, but also getting everyday people to get involved, contributing a few dollars. They're going to say, you know, we helped to put this together. Uh, and yes, there are, you know, many different avenues in the state and with the federal government that we're going to be pursuing. And, uh, to, to, let's, the component here is community, and that's what it does. And it brings people that. back together, and that's what it is. I mean, you know, I've always grown up to say, well, if you can solve a problem to us or provide a solution to a problem, then you've got something that can potentially be a business plan. Well, we're solving, providing a solution to multitudes of problems. It's a staple. Food is a staple. It's a staple. And what we're talking about doing is, again, I'm back to that, bringing people together. So this site that we do have picked out, that we, that we are going after, as we're, we're, here's, what, here's what the bottom line is. We're turning 13 acres of land into 26 acres of food production with an on-site farmer's market and entertainment for people to come and learn. This is what, what's happening. This is what our future is going to be. And this is the amount of jobs we created. Now, picture this 10 times fold because we can blow it up from there. It's scalable, very scalable. So it doesn't just have to cover heads of lettuce. We're talking blueberries in the middle of December, freshly picked. We're talking... Uh, strawberries, greens, whatever you, you want to imagine. Right. I mean, it, and, it can be done. And Technology's and there. And as you say, get the community involved in growing this food. And think about getting, you know, blackberries, blueberries, and you buy them, and they taste really good. That would <laughs> be really nice. You don't throw them out. <laughs> well, I wish you both 
luck, you have a great passion for doing this, and it makes complete sense to grow the food here and control it. Have kids watch their food being grown here, and as you point out, Eric, bring the community back together and get back to basics. So Eric, Raquel, thank you very much for coming on Eco Grow Farms. Good luck. Thank, thank you. you. Spend all night kissing and it was right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution. I find the keys to the door, but it's also a metaphor. Need to keep on to the grocery store of my mind. Just the same time, I'll skip right ahead to the last ride. The harder we look, the less we can see. Don't you know, you know, you know that you need me.